empires do not begin or end on a certain date, but they do end, and the West has not yet come to terms with its fading supremacy. At the end of every empire, under the guise of renewal, tribes, armies, and organizations appear and devour the heritage of the former superpower, often from within. essay The Fate of Empires, the soldier, diplomat and traveller Lieutenant General Sir John Glubb analysed the life cycle of empires. He found remarkable similarities between them all. An empire lasts about 250 years or 10 generations, from the early pioneers to the final conspicuous consumers who become a burden on the state. Six ages defined the lifespan of an empire. The age of pioneers. The age of conquests. The age of commerce. The age of affluence. The age of intellect, ending with bread and circuses in the age of decadence. basically a copper coin and they learned how to play. It was washed in silver and the circulation and plating came on. And at the 
end, all the senators that really did at one time represent the people only were interested in representing how much wealth they could steal at the top. Great empire wealth always dazzles, but beneath the surface, the unbridled desire for money, power, and material possessions means that duty and public service are replaced by leaders and citizens who scramble for the spoils. Historically, all the signs of, of the demise of the empire are beginning to develop, some are more trenchant than others. This current financial and economic crisis, uh, that sort of thing always accompanies the demise of empire. The people of Rome were constantly being distracted by the gladiatorial events, and, and, and the, the politicians knew that they did this, and it was unless it was a huge event going on. It, they created a new event with lots and lots of gladiators every day. We're doing that. That is that is a common trait of declining empires. And so today in the United States, for example, you find tremendous emphasis on all kinds of television programs that distract people from what's really going on. Sports is a big part of that, as it was in the times. In essence, we've been lulled into a, a lethargy, and we've accepted it. Just as our sports stars today earn vast sums, so did Roman charioteers. In the second century, one by the name of Gaius Apuleius Diocles amassed a fortune of 35 million sesterces in prize money, equivalent to several billion dollars today. Strangely, perhaps, there's another profession that is disproportionately hallowed as an empire declines. The Romans, the Ottomans, and the Spanish all made celebrities of their chefs. And this again is typifying the end of an empire, where things were so great we have this last oomph of momentum that we used to be great, and we felt great, and we don't feel it anymore. So everyone is out searching for it. Well, maybe it's in the best food, or the best clothes, or the best music, or the best movies, or a reality TV show, or another magazine. But you can never get enough of what you don't need. What you need is a strong moral conviction that is pervasive throughout the society and integrity reigns. There's a vast apathy. There's a vast amoralism, even a political nature to it. That is to say, there are vast numbers of people who don't give a damn. And so there's this, this uh, natural, I suppose, entropy. Any living organism, which an empire is, of course, um, over time dies. The um, question is, how does it die? Does it die about a cascade of events, or does it die over a long period of time?
baby boomer generation were born into this age of decadence. Perhaps unwittingly, they've broken the unspoken intergenerational contract. Through unfettered consumerism, spiraling house prices, and a desire for eternal youth, the baby boomers have squandered future generations' inheritance. generation, the generation right after my generation, um, I think we forgot that little phrase in the preamble to our constitution which says, and our posterity. All of a sudden it became us, period. The baby boom generation, which I'm a part of, has gone and done the biggest misallocation of capital in the history of mankind. We have had cheap oil or cheap energy is a better way to phrase it. We've had an abundance of ideas. And we have chosen a system and perpetuated it that is probably one of the worst ways to use the blessings that were bestowed upon us. And we are going to pay a price for that.